everybody, we're on our way up to Knott's Berry Farm. We just got the kids dropped off and my sister came into town so we could go have a couple's weekend. We're going to Knott's Berry Farm today and then spending the night up there and tomorrow we're gonna go tour some haunted places in San Diego. Make sure you stick around because later in the video we're going to have a conversation and share with you some things that we think have helped us to build a successful and happy marriage. I think I'm trying to find a San Diego sweater. Why would you buy a San Diego sweater if you live in San Diego? Because sometimes it's good to be a tourist where you live. Oh, okay. Helps you appreciate it. So we just got done with our tour at the Whaley House. We just did the public admission self-guided tour and for that tour you're not allowed to take any video. So we did take some pictures for you guys and we'll just uh, crop a few of those in right now. What are you doing? I don't think about what I want to say. We just talked about it. I know, but it's early and I forgot. <laughs> so, we are coming to the end of our little mini vacation that we just had. And it's been a lot of fun, but it is definitely time to get back to our kids. And we are very excited to go see them. Before we left, we thought it'd be a good idea, or at least potentially helpful to people, for us to share what has helped us have a successful and happy marriage for the last decade. Okay, so in no particular order, tip number one is to always just talk to each other. If your spouse is doing something that makes you happy, tell them. Um, I think that that helps a lot just to know what George likes that I do when he recognizes that and when I do that for him but also don't be afraid to talk to each other if something's upsetting you or you're afraid of something just always remember to be respectful too when you are communicating these things that are a little more hard and try and make it a safe place for you guys to talk to each other I know that I can go to George and tell him anything even if it's kind of crazy and he uh, <laughs> He's gonna love me anyway and we'll be able to work it out. Next thing would be enjoying yourself. Um, being a little crazy and having a little fun more often than not is very important. There are gonna be some intense and serious times in marriage and there should be, but being a little crazy really brings life to everything. Uh, random dance parties, 
uh, if you're my wife, dancing in the middle of the street or in the middle of a restaurant <laughs> courtyard seems to be the way to go. Um, it's important. It matters. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. And you got to love life. So why not show everyone else you love life too? Uh, also, you can never ever say I love you too many times in a day. Um, before he leaves the house, um, I always make sure it's the last thing we say to each other. Yeah, sometimes I get a text and it's like, hey, come back in the house. You didn't say I love you. And I'm like, ah, you started the car. All right, I'll come. But, yep, and I always want a kiss right before he walks out the door. So even if he gives me a kiss and has to go do something with him for three minutes, he's coming back and kissing me right before he leaves. Um, also, just texting each other throughout the day, sweet little notes, or putting a note in a lunchbox, or writing in the mirror while someone's in the shower. Just making sure that you express those feelings of love often. But don't overdo it and be stalkerish and send like 500 texts a day because that's just annoying. Uh, and it's annoying to the people around you. So don't do that. It's also important that you're willing to do things that you may not necessarily enjoy, that your spouse does enjoy. So for me, that may be sitting through a doctor TV show or watching a chick flick. Hallmark and, all Christmas season. Yeah, or all even the in, ladies know what I'm talking about. Or even in July, super lame. <laughs> um, and for her, that might be going to a metal show or watching a scary movie or something like that. And along with that, just taking interest in each other's hobbies and teaching each other things. Uh, George started doing model rockets about a year ago, and it was something we started doing together as a whole family. I have taught him how to knit. It's not something he does often. He's done it like two times, uh, but he can do a mean garter stitch yeah. if he needs to. Mm -hmm. I can make a pot holder. So <laughs> just, um, yeah, do things together, even if it's not your favorite thing, because it is something that they enjoy and want to do. Uh, next, we have found that it's important to allow each other room to pursue our individual dreams and work on personal growth. Uh, for me right now, that means George is supporting me through working on my bachelor's degree and um, he's working on his sustainable surf startup, but also just allowing each other to have time for hobbies and individual things that bring us joy important to do things together but also not to lose your identity and just become George's wife or Raiden's mom, Cash's mom, Cullen's mom. It's important for me and for George that I can still be Katrina and he can still be George. I would say continuing to date each other is very important. Um, now not in a you know overly datey way. Uh, obviously with young kids sometimes it's hard to get out but trying to get out and see a movie, get out and do something as simple as going to grab an ice cream cone if you don't have time to do anything else and eat it in the car on your way home. Uh, for us, sometimes that means getting takeout or ordering pizza and playing Mario Kart on the couch. Uh, with kids, it's hard, but it's important to still make time for each other and do stuff that is fun and enjoyable, even if it's super light and easy. Well, and not just date each other, but still kind of court each other. Do things that you would romantically do for one another before you were married. Just cute, surprise things that really let each other know that you do still care even when you're caught up in the mess of raising your young family. Don't speak negatively about your spouse to your friends or to your coworkers or anyone who is not your spouse now that's not like the lame stuff like i leave my socks on the floor all the time and i do roll them though they are together um but they never make it in the hamper and katrina doesn't put the toilet paper roll on the roll thing and just leaves it on the counter so that's fine but serious <laughs> negative things that uh you find to be issues within your marriage belong discussed in your marriage not with your friends and not with other people when I hear someone complain about something that is impactful to their marriage, that tends to be something that I continue to think about, about their spouse. And to me, that's not an image that belongs in anyone's head other than your own to be resolved. 
Especially because you're going to work that problem out with your spouse and you'll move past it and forget it, but that will be a lasting impression that's made on another person. So just only talk positively about each other. And if you do that, it's only going to increase your positive thoughts about each other too. So the final thing we want to share with you is to make memories together and with your kids. Uh, time goes pretty fast, we're finding. It's, we've only been married a little over a decade, but our oldest is almost nine and it's kind of crazy how quickly they start. He's like a little man, it's nuts. He's almost as tall as me, um, which according to George, isn't that hard to do. Uh, recently, in the past few years, what we've started doing, instead of buying our children lots of things for birthdays specifically, and we're also doing it more and more with Christmas, is we're buying experiences. Uh, George will take the kids on a date, and I'll take the kids on dates, and also um, we will get season passes to somewhere or buy tickets to go do something fun we've all wanted to do or plan a family trip or just take them to go do something they've been wanting to do for the whole day with one friend and we find that that one helps keep the clutter out of our house and two just brings them more joy than a toy or an object that they're gonna forget they even had in a few weeks finding that time to spend time together and that drive to make that what you want to do instead of gifting can be difficult at first because you don't have a physical object to put in a box and put a bow on and hand to your kids but months and years down the line when they're talking about these experiences and they're remembering the joy that they got out of them and the time that they spent with their family is when it really becomes rewarding it's something that can't be replaced and can't have a price tag put on it and those are the things that really matter in life. Those are what your children are going to be able to tell their children or their friends later down the road about and the impressions that they will have about the kind of life that they lived as a child. We hope that these tips might in some way be impactful to your life and help you in your relationship. And if you have anything that we didn't share, we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and write it in the comments. And we will see you again in a couple weeks. Bye-bye-bye.